So hello guys once again. We are back with a uh, session with Ish Sukun. He will be talking uh, about uh, B3FS, the preferred uh, file system for OpenSUSE and Fedora. So Ish Sukun is uh, a uh, system architect at, at LSL Digital and uh, and also an OpenSUSE member. So his session is pre-recorded actually, so let's watch it. Hello and welcome to the Virtual Developers Conference 2020. I thank you for viewing this presentation on B3FS. My name is Ish Sukan and I am a systems architect at La Sentinelle Limited. I like hanging out at local tech events in Mauritius and I usually write about those events and meetups on my blog hacklog.in. I am an open source member and currently volunteer in the project's election committee. This presentation will cover B3FS and two of its features, subvolumes and snapshots. B3FS is an abbreviation for B3 file system. I have seen people pronouncing it in different ways, some calling it BTFS, better file system, or B3 file system. I usually stick to B3FS. B3FS is a general purpose file system for Linux that can scale up for large storage. It follows the copy and write principle, which is a highly efficient resource management technique. In this technique, if a resource needs to be duplicated but not modified, the resource can be shared between the copy and the original rather than making another copy of the resource. It is only when modifications are required then copies are made. So, a copy operation is tr triggered only at first write, else resources are shared. BitRefs was developed by Chris Mason at Oracle. However, today as an open source project, B3FS has grown beyond the walls of Oracle and uh, uh, many con companies contribute to the project. Companies like SUSE, Facebook, Western Digital and several others. B3FS was adopted by OpenSUSE in as early as 2010 in OpenSUSE 11.3. It later became the distribution's default file system. Recently, the Fedora project announced that they are switching to B3FS as default file system. That change will reflect in Fedora version 33. As I stated earlier, in this presentation we will talk about subvolumes and snapshots. A B3FS subvolume is a POSIX file namespace that can be mounted as a block device and operations carried on just like traditional mount points. The B3FS layout has a top-level root directory that holds one or several subvolumes. The layout of the subvolumes can be flat, nested, or a mix of both. Subvolumes can be mounted as read-only or read-write. If you're new and you would like to experiment with B3FS, then I suggest that you start with a Linux distribution that already has B3FS support and preferably defaults with B3FS layout at installation time. My recommendation here is OpenSUSE. You can try OpenSUSE Tumbleweed or MicroOS and let the installer choose the default partition layout. Richard Brown, the former chairman of the OpenSUSE project, wrote a well-detailed blog post about the B3FS root file system layout as used by OpenSUSE. I encourage you to read the blog post. It gives a pretty good idea on the commands and steps to reproduce an OpenSUSE style B3FS layout. Now, let's say you have an OpenSUSE instance with B3FS and you like you would like to list uh, all the subvolumes. Just type B3FS subvolume list slash with pseudo privileges and the command will list all the subvolumes under the root under the root path, including the snapshots. Uh, we will talk about snapshots later on. You can also use the Yast partitioner in OpenSUSE to produce a visual layout of the subvolumes. To print file system information, uh, you can use the file system show or the file system df slash uh, with the b3fs command. Else, uh, you can use file system usage slash and the output is a combination of the two previous commands.
To experiment further, you can create subvolumes for your different projects and mount them accordingly. Create snapshots and restore a specific snapshot using the set default option. Now let's have a look at snapshots. A bitref snapshot is a copy of a subvolume, as simple as that. A snapshot does not make copies of the files but only shares the data and the metadata of the original files, just as we learned about the copy on write principle. Snapshots are fast to create and they do not consume a lot of space. If you create a snapshot of a subvolume, mount it as read write and add a file to it, the file won't appear in the original subvolume. This is because they are distinct subvolumes. We manage snapshots in OpenSUSE using a utility called Snapper. Running Snapper list with pseudo privileges will show all the snapshots available on the system. Every snapshot has a number. Snapshots can be of type single or be a pre and post pair. The latter is useful during crucial system modification such as upgrades. Pre-upgrade snapshots allow us to roll back to a well-running system if the upgrade leaves us uh, a broken system. Pre and post snapshots can be compared using the snapshot numbers. The output of the command shows new files that have been created and files that have been modified. We can also use diff to compare the content changes in a file between two snapshots. And lastly, here is a bunch of commands to create a pair of pre and post snapshots or a single snapshot. Uh, deleting a snapshot cannot be simpler than just specifying delete and the snapshot number. You can find the snapshot numbers using snapper list. And this brings us to the end of the presentation. I hope uh, it has been useful and you could learn uh, one or two things about P3FS. So once again, I thank you for viewing this presentation. If you have any question, feel free to email or send me a tweet. Okay, yeah, so if your session was uh, very informative, but unfortunately, I'm not really uh, aware of uh, file systems. I've heard of some, but uh, yeah, the most common that I think we also got a, got a question. Uh, the most common that I've heard uh, recently was ZFS on Ubuntu. Ubu, uh, his question was Ubuntu has been pushing ZFS. Do they not provide basically the same features? Um, yes, ZFS uh, does support copy on write, does support snapshots. So, from that sense, uh, you could say they provide similar features, okay. but uh, design-wise, I believe they are a bit difficult, uh, a, a bit different. And uh, you know, ZFS comes from Oracle. Probably that is the one thing that um, some people in the Linux community won't really push forward, and uh, they would rather stick to. to to something like uh, B3FS. Oh, but I, I, I did forget. Uh, uh, B3FS also was <laughs> developed by uh, Chris Mason while he was working for Oracle. Oh, yeah, they do appear to be competition. And, uh, uh, but I do have to mention something about Chris Mason, Mason is that uh, prior to Oracle, he was working for SUSE. So perhaps that's a bit uh, why SUSE uh, has such a, you know, an affinity for, for B3FS. Okay, so coming back to the question, I think it was Aditya who asked the question about uh, uh, Ubuntu pushing for ZFS. So yeah, we could, we could say they both have similar features. I think, uh, uh, did I use ZFS previously on some servers? No, I don't think so. No, no, no. The only... Uh, the only two alternative uh, file systems that I have used, which provide features such as snapshots, or of course B3FS and LVM, Logical Volume Manager, which is uh, currently available in uh, Red Hat based systems like Fedora, uh, CentOS, and of course Red Hat Enterprise Linux. No 
not a lot of experience with ZFS. So uh, before uh, before you take the question from uh, Aditya, I think Girish, you were saying that you do not have that much experience with file systems and all, but you are a Linux user these days. You are experimenting yes. a lot, and I like in the previous talks uh, you did mention that uh, uh, you are enjoying working on Debian. So what is your default? You know. When you're setting up a, a, a Debian system, what is your default choice? You go by whatever Debian offers you, or you have, you know, some particularities designing the file system layout. When I when I install my Debian machine, I I, I don't uh, really know why I should uh, use the other file system. So since I don't have the knowledge or to what benefits or disadvantage I'm getting with X file system, so I just go with the default. Maybe, yeah, maybe you could uh, tell me a bit about uh, how file system affects uh, performance and what benefits we get, things like that. Just a brief... Uh, what, yeah, what, it, it depends. Yeah. It depends on, uh, on what you're trying to achieve. Like, uh, let's say you're working on a desktop uh, computer, a laptop, then probably uh, whether you go on using uh, ext4 or b3fs uh, or some other file system performance wise performance wise uh, probably you won't see that much of difference okay but uh, if you're running a server that has a lot of uh, let's say write operations then it starts to matter. Or if you have a file system where you have a lot of read operations, say you have uh, a, a, a website that has a lot of traffic, so most probably you're getting hits, you're reading from the file systems, you're displaying images and files and all, and all of that, and uh, then it matters. Or you have a server uh, where you're going to have storage uh, for large files, like you have tons of files which are going to be big files. Maybe uh, we're not talking of, of gigabytes here, we're talking much more than that. Then uh, you will need, uh, perhaps you will see that ext4 does not really meet uh, your requirements because the performance is going to degrade because of the big files. Uh, sorry, I think to, because I'm talking of file systems, a fly happened to enter through the window and is going round my head. So after this talk, maybe I'm going to chase this one. <laughs> yeah, so that's a bit funny, but uh, anyway. So yeah, I was saying it depends on the, uh, on, on what you're trying to achieve. And uh, if we stay on the topic of file systems and servers, then probably one more uh, uh, one more example would be to, to look at Ceph, C-E-P-H. Uh, self storage and that would be uh, a very nice uh, experiment uh, if you would like to to have a look at that. I have one more question. Uh, yeah, like, go uh, on. Yes, the Ubuntu has been pushing ZFS, and it's now when you install Ubuntu on a on a laptop or something, you get a ZFS like you can use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is there any reason that uh, I would uh, want to use ZFS on a laptop? Uh, to be honest, Grish, I won't be able to to answer this uh, for the, for the simple reason that I haven't been using Ubuntu lately uh, much, so I yeah. don't know the reasoning behind. I do not know whether uh, Ubuntu is trying to replicate the same kind of system that Ubuntu is trying to do with B3FS. You know, uh, like. A, uh, offering transactional updates, you have a read-only uh, root file system, and then every time you update your system, it takes a snapshot, a pre-snapshot before the update, Then and then all your new packages, your new software will be available in the post-snapshot, which is available to you after re restart. This is what transactional update is about, so that uh, after a, a system upgrade, if your system is broken, you can still roll back to your previous snapshot. Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, what uh, OpenSUSE tried to achieve with B3FS. So probably, uh, since ZFS also supports uh, similar features, uh, copy on write, snapshots and all, probably they are trying to do the same thing. And if yes, then it would make sense to do ZFS on your laptop, on your desktop computer, because you have this sort of, of, uh, of security 
that uh, if your Ubuntu system is left uh, broken after an upgrade, you can still roll back to your previous working version. So yes, uh, that was a quick and I short uh, discussion about uh, file systems and particularly BPFs. Okay, so I guess that's all. We don't have any more questions. Yeah, so I, I, even I got to learn some uh, a, a bit about the file system. I need to maybe read a bit on the benefits and what it brings us. Or maybe you can just you know experiment with it. Yeah, yeah, create create, create a partition on your laptop and uh, format it as B3FS. Uh, and in my presentation, you will see that I gave a bunch of commands how to create sub volumes and and all. You can try that. You can try creating snapshots. Or like Aditya suggested, that uh, uh, how do you call that? Um, uh, oh, I I see. He has a question. How is rate performance and ease of use on B3FS? Uh, sorry, Aditya, I cannot uh, really answer that part because that's not something I experimented on. Uh, I can check it back. I can check it and get back to you on Twitter to, to answer that question. Uh, I've been using mostly uh, B3FS uh, on my personal laptop, on my servers that are running on virtual machines. I haven't had any experience of B3FS uh, on a RAID system. So it will be a bit difficult to for me to give to give first hand you know uh, opinion on that. So yeah, that would be all on my uh, from my side.